Now let's see the reverse process of understanding the arithmetic progression where if a pattern is given I can identify the first term and the common difference and of course even the nth term for an arithmetic progression. But what if I give only the first term and the common difference? Can we construct the whole of the sequence using only a and d is the biggest question out here. So let's see the reverse process. Let's take an example problem here to understand the reverse process of constructing the whole of the arithmetic progression just from the minimum information of the first term and the common difference. So my question here is, if the first term is minus 65, And the common difference is 7 then how do I construct the arithmetic sequence then construct its respective arithmetic progression is the question out here so in case of this problem I identify my first term which is denoted by a1 is a which is minus 65. The first term is generally denoted by a which is minus 65. And the common difference is 7 implies d is 7. So d is 7 and a is minus 65 is what we get. And the question is to construct the respective arithmetic progression. We can do that because if we revisit the general arithmetic progression which we have considered is a, a plus d, a plus 2d, a plus 3d, so on and so forth is what we get as the sequence. Now in case of this, because I know a and d, I am going to substitute in each of the terms where I get the whole of the sequence. So let's see how the sequence is obtained. Initially a is negative 65, then the next is a plus d which is negative 65 plus 7, then it is a plus 2d plus 2 times of 7, so on and so forth. Now this on further simplification gives me negative 65, negative 65 plus 7 is nothing but negative 58 then negative 58 plus 7 is negative 51 plus 14 is negative 51 and this gives me 44 because minus 65 plus 21 is negative 44 and so on and so forth. So this is how the sequence is constructed using the first term and the common difference can be constructed. So like that, given the sequence, I can find A and D and given A and D, I can find the sequence where the first term is minus 65, the second term is minus 58, the third term A3 is minus 51 and the fourth term A4 is minus 44. My 17th term A17 also can be found because I don't know here, I cannot always construct till 17 times. So my 17th term, say for example, I would like to find the 17th term a17 is nothing but a plus 16d one shot of 17 therefore this comes out to be a which is minus 65 plus 16 times of d which is 7 and then I get the answer obtained from there so that this reduces to negative 65 6 sevens, 7 ones, 1 112 70 42, 47 plus 47 is the answer. So my term, my 17th term is 47 in the given sequence somewhere lying here is how we understand the concept of arithmetic progression connected with the first term, the common difference and the nth term a n, a plus n minus 1 times d. 
Now that we have seen the definition of arithmetic progression with, the respect, with its respect to formulae, now comes the types of arithmetic progressions. Generally, there are two types of arithmetic progressions identified in mathematics, the branch of mathematics. One is the finite arithmetic progression and the other is the infinite arithmetic progression. So coming to this, it is the finite and the other is the infinite arithmetic progressions which we deal with. What is an infinite arithmetic progression or what is a finite arithmetic progression? So for example, if the terms are finite, in case of finite arithmetic progression, there are finite number of terms. That means you can count them, they are countable. So the finite number of terms which are countable are said to be finite arithmetic progression and in infinite arithmetic progression there are infinite number of terms which are uncountable very large. Infinite number of terms which are uncountable is what we identify the difference between finite and infinite. So let's take an example to understand the finite and infinite arithmetic progressions. So when it comes to understanding the finite arithmetic progression, as the definition clearly says that the number of terms are finite which are countable, then we take only those terms which are limited. Here they are unlimited. Say for example, I take the amount I deposit in the bank is 500 then again it, it increases to 600 or doubles up every five years so it becomes 1000 and then it becomes 1500 so every time it is 500 rupees increased so 2500 so nobody would be willing to put their amount in the bank for 100 years or unlimited number of years so depositing the amount in the bank is purely an example of a finite arithmetic progression where first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, at the most 10 years or 20 years, but we don't put it for 100 or 150 years. So this is an example of a finite arithmetic sequence because the common difference is same. Not only that, the number of terms is limited. One, two, three, four, five. So there are five terms which are there in the entire sequence. So therefore, in this arithmetic progression, since there are five terms, is an example of a finite arithmetic progression. But the same case, say for example, I take set of even numbers in mathematics we all know that the even numbers are say 0 2 4 6 so on and so forth where even numbers are generally with the common difference of 2 this is an arithmetic progression because the common difference is 2 where the set of even numbers never end there are infinitely many even numbers in mathematics so therefore this is never ending in the end it goes on and on till infinity but this doesn't go till infinity. Therefore, this is an example of finite arithmetic progression and set of even numbers with the common difference 2 is an arithmetic progression which is an infinite arithmetic progression and finite and infinite respectively.